Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Crumbs and today we're gonna be taking a look at five habits that'll get you to diamond. Getting to diamond is no easy feat, but with enough practice and patience, it's definitely possible for anyone. That being said, you'll need to put in the effort and form some amazing habits. In this video, we'll walk you through some of the best habits to develop, why they're important, and how to practice them. So let's quit wasting time and dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, we have the habit of maintaining a high CS average. We know you all are tired of hearing this one over and over again, but it's extremely important. CSing is a fundamental that takes a long time to develop properly, and being able to have high CS numbers throughout 90% of your games takes this one step further. Having high farm will allow you to almost always have a gold advantage against your opponent. While they miss a few minions each wave, you will masterfully collect them all and start your snowball. Now while missing 2-3 to three minions a wave may not seem impactful, it's actually quite a bit of gold. Let's say you're constantly missing 2 melees and a caster minion. That adds up to 56 gold a wave that you're losing out on. If a wave spawns every 30 seconds, then after 5 minutes, you'll have missed 10 waves of farm. So over those 5 minutes, you may have missed 15 CS, which sounds relatively small, but that ends up being 560 gold that you don't get to spend. This amount of gold adds up extremely fast and we're not even taking into account cannon minions which are worth about 3 melee minions. That 560 gold is a longsword and a few pink wards. It's the last bit of gold you may need to finish your item and reach your power spike. Most importantly, it's 560 gold that you lost for no reason and it could have been your item advantage versus your opponent. If you're looking to fix your CS numbers, then be sure to practice CSing. One of our favorite ways to build up your CSing skills is by running a roughly 10 to 12 minute drill before your daily grind. Let's quickly dive into how you can adapt this drill to your own routine. You'll want to start by going into practice duel and picking either Soraka or LeBlanc. I know this sounds weird, just hear me out. For your runes, be sure to take full defensive shards with Guardian, Shield Bash, Bone Plating, Unflinching, Mana Flow Band, and Celerity. Load into the game and buy a few health potions, but do not buy any damage items. You're gonna be farming the first three waves the best you can. Try not to miss any CS and don't use abilities. You'll find that it'll be fairly challenging. After you farm the first three waves, go back in with the same champion and runes, but instead take the damage shard and attack speed shard. Start the game with a Doran's Blade and farm the three waves again. While there are tons of variations to this drill which include things like adding enemy bots, this basic setup should be more than enough for now. Be sure to stay dedicated and take your time to hit every CS. It'll seem boring and useless, but you'll find that your CS in lane will increase significantly and so will your win rate. Keeping your CS numbers high during the mid to late game can be a bit intimidating. It's often what players struggle with once they've perfected their lane CS. But not to worry, here at Pro Guides, we've got your back. With our in-depth guides, we can help take your macro to the next level and have your CS average reach pro status. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry though, we have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and dive into our next great habit. Pulling us back into the video, we have the habit of lowering your pointless deaths and overall just dying less. Having a low amount of deaths may seem easy, but you'd be surprised how many people struggle with it. Plus, don't just focus on the death amount, keep in mind what you lose because you died. Let's put this into perspective. While dying three times may not seem like a lot, it's important not to die during certain times of the game. You may be averaging 2-3 to three deaths a game, but if you die during the most important part of the match, it doesn't matter that you're not feeding. Dying in League of Legends gives the enemy team a big advantage. If you die to your laner, they now have a gold advantage from killing you. But don't forget that they'll also get an XP advantage, since you're dead and they now have pressure on the map to make a play while you don't. Let's take this one step further. If you lose a 1v1 top lane, you'll be down some XP and gold, but now they get to take a few plates, which sets you back even more. On top of this, now their jungler can take Herald for free, which provides both gold and global pressure on the map. From there, the jungler can go to your lane or another lane to break even more plates with Herald, and the game has suddenly become that much harder. 
deaths like these may seem small, but they have a lot of impact on the map, especially if you mistime them. Sometimes your death just sets you slightly behind, but sometimes it'll snowball and make games near impossible. Overall, just try to avoid dying as a whole, and if you're gonna play to die, then understand the consequences. Sometimes taking one for the team is worth it if you can trade for something like Baron. Now we've been talking a lot about these deaths being super impactful and while in ideal situations you'll almost always be punished, that's not always the case. Sometimes you'll die and it doesn't seem bad since not much happened because of it, but that's still not an excuse to increase your death numbers. These are what we like to call pointless deaths. This means you died for quite literally no reason and essentially set yourself and your team behind for free. Let's go over one of the most common ways people pointlessly die in League, and you gotta hear it from me, I am an expert at this. If Dragon is up, but your team is unable to fight it, then it is best to just leave it and look for a play elsewhere. However, a lot of players will go to Dragon anyways because they want to ward it to be sure that the enemy is doing it. They usually get the ward, realize the enemy is doing it like they predicted, and then die for it. You just pointlessly died and set yourself behind for this. You knew the entire time they were doing it, so just walk away. You don't need to have eye confirmation to know that they're on it since you can't do anything about it anyways. Alright, let's take a break from all this death talk and focus on our next habit. Being able to take the time to have meaningful play and develop mastery is an extremely powerful habit. As it goes, practice makes perfect. It's a phrase that holds a ton of value because of how true it can be. The more effort you put in improving, the better you'll become. However, a lot of players don't play with meaning. They will learn about concepts and maybe practice them a bit, but that's the end of it. If you want to truly improve, then be sure to play with purpose and meaning. For each game you play, understand what it is you're working to improve on. If you're currently practicing your CS and want to maintain a 7 CS average, then be sure to keep that in mind every game. As you load in, remind yourself that you're playing for that 7 CS per minute. You don't care if you die 10 times or even if you win or lose. You don't care if you get a penta, you don't care if the enemy feeds. For this game, this week or even this month, all you care about is reaching a consistent 7 CS per minute. Having this thought process and practice makes it so you can fully develop strong fundamentals and habits. If you're mindlessly spamming 10 games a day without forcing yourself to apply what you learn, then it's just time wasted. Playing with purpose is an extremely important habit and skill for any sport in the world. While we have been talking about playing with purpose for macro reasons, we also mean for limiting your champion pools. So there is a reason that one tricking is one of the best ways to climb. If you one trick a champion and then play them with purpose, you can very quickly become a master of that champ. Their mechanics will become second nature to you and you'll be able to execute combos without thinking. The laning phase will be easier as you understand trade patterns and power spikes for certain matchups. This will only happen if you pay attention to everything you do as you play and learn. Did you realize that maybe you do poorly versus Victor? What is it about this pick that makes it hard to deal with? Does he poke you out of lane? Then next time you know to go second win in Doran's shield. Does he deal a ton of bursts but you can still win the overall duel? Well, now you know to grab a Maw of Malmortius to win. There are tons of small things you can learn that can improve your play. Continue to play with purpose, and we promise you'll pick on them and you'll improve so quickly. Now that we're halfway through the video, let's take a quick break from these habits and move on to our favorite pro guys tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what is something you wish someone had taught you during your climbing journey? For me, it's the tip we just covered, playing with purpose. Not only would I have saved so much time by avoiding the mindless grind, but I would have improved at an increased rate and perhaps gotten even better. So playing with purpose I think is something that is incredibly important in Lee and with everything in general in life, but let's not get too philosophical. That's my take on it and we want to hear from you, so let us know in the comments section down below and let's get back into the video. Habit number four, and no particular order, is VOD reviewing. Similar to playing with purpose, reminding yourself to VOD review games is extremely important. It allows you to take a look at your own gameplay and break down what exactly went wrong. This is also a place to see if you applied what you learned or if you simply autopiloted through the game. While the action of VOD reviewing may not be a habit, reminding yourself of it's important to do it is. 
Let's do a quick rundown of how you can VOD review your own games. To start off, write down what you think went wrong with the game. Did you die at the wrong time? Was your CS too low so you spiked a bit too late? Maybe you misplayed due to mechanical error and it just needs some practice to clean it up. When coming up with a reason, find out what you did wrong. We don't care about how or what or who messed up on your team or on the enemy team. They won't be in your next few games anyways, so it doesn't matter. Once you have a solid idea of what you think went wrong, you're gonna rewatch the game at one and a half times speed. Break it into early, mid, and late game for easier sections. Between each section, note what could have been done better and if the game is still winnable. If it is, what needs to happen for you and your allies to come out victorious? If it isn't, why not? Keep note of these questions as you watch the game and walk yourself through the answers. VOD reviewing doesn't always provide answers to your questions, but it does implement the idea into your head. This means for your next game, you can look to avoid making the same mistakes. And voila, you've made progress. Once you're done VOD reviewing, regroup your thoughts and prepare for the next match. Remember, we play with purpose so that we can improve and climb and save time. Last but certainly not least, we've got the habit of maintaining mental fortitude and giving it some maintenance. League can be a fairly stressful game, especially if you have allies that are AFK, toxic, feeding, or just downright bad. While we like to believe that they don't get to us, it'll slowly get into your head and cause you to play worse if you focus on them. This is why we recommend playing 3-4 to four try hard games a day max. In between your matches, be sure to take a break and regroup your thoughts. Bring up what your goal is and what you need to focus on to improve. We're here to win and learn, and trust us, both are so hard to do if you're tilted. League may just be a game, but you gotta remember, you come first, so be sure to take care of number one. Drink some water, walk around, eat some food, and make sure your mind is right before you start your daily grind. If you truly want to improve, you'll need all of the brain power you can get. Be patient with yourself and give yourself some room for error. We all make mistakes. The important thing is that we learn from them and you don't give up. Those are all the tips we've got for you. So that is going to be the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to join our Pro Guides family over at ProGuides.com where we offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, good luck on the rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.